Welcome to the final part of customizing the HTML5 video controls. In this video, we'll show some design tips for customizing the video player to match your specific brand or your specific site design. And I want to remind everyone that HTML5, CSS3, and some JavaScript functionality cannot yet be depended on to work in all browser software environments. Now, once these technologies are standardized, you can then depend on them to work across the board. And that's going to happen pretty soon. First, let's take a look at what we left off with. So we have really all of the components that we need for a standard custom programmed video player with all the controls that you would expect to be on a standard player. Now the first thing I want to do is customize the way these slider components look because I don't like the default slider component look. So we can just use some simple CSS to achieve that effect. All right, so enter into the style element and pop in this code that's going to infect all input type range elements on your page. And you can also call those by ID or class name. If you want to have more range elements on your page that, that are not styled this way, then you'll want to target those by the seek slider and volume slider ID or give them a class. Give those elements a class and then apply these rules to that class. But what I'm doing right here is just I'm targeting all input type range elements on my page. So let's press control S to save the file. And now let's refresh our little application. All right. So now I have the exact kind of slider that I want. I have my own little custom knobby and my own little custom track that that knobby slides along. You see? You can make those any color shape that you want. Those can be square. The way I got those to be round little buttons and make the mouse turn to that little hand symbol when they go over them is by using cursor pointer to make the hand symbol appear like it was a button and border radius 100 that gives me the complete nice circular effect on that element otherwise it would be perfectly square and I made it have background white and its size is 15 round and we use the webkit prefix for the appearance property and we give that a value of none now in the future you could remove the webkit prefix right there and right there and right there and you could expect it to work in most browsing environments that's in the future but for now we have to use some prefixes where they're available and this uh, property and the slider thumb you can't access the slider thumb in Firefox yet because Firefox won't even render the range element yet so you're just going to have to wait now what you can do is use a div inside of another div for a custom slider component and you'll also have to program custom drag features into your knob. That's why I just opted to use the input type range element. This way I don't have to program any custom drag features into my sliders. But like I said, I'm going to be using flash video just like YouTube does until I, and my indication for when to turn to using HTML5 video elements is going to be the day when YouTube starts using the HTML5 video element. YouTube still uses the flash video element. So the day when they switch, that is your indication. That's the day you know when you can switch safely. And it'll be worth it for you to check out their source code to see how they're handling fallbacks or workarounds when that day comes. And actually I'm going to make my slider look a little bit more like this slider here where it has a little bit of border color. So I'll make this background black and then give it a border. Maybe something like that. One pixel, solid. Now I'll refresh my little player. See, now I have the exact sliders that I want. And I could make this any color that I want. And you can also set a default font. So I'll show you how to change the font for any text that you might have in your controls. So you can go into your controls bar and set the font family right there. And I'll make mine trebuchet. Then I'll test this again. And you can see now I have a specified font. Now the only thing left is to make graphical representations of these buttons. But you can see when my pause, when my play pause button goes into pause state, it knocks out my, one of my elements to go down. So I'm going to make a little button to go there where each state will be the exact same size and I won't have those issues. And I'll just show you how to customize the play pause button. 
and then you can go ahead for homework you can change your mute button to be graphics and also your full screen button you can do that the same way that I'm gonna do the play pause buttons okay I'm gonna use fireworks to set up my play pause graphics so I'm gonna create a new document make it 800 by 600 okay now I want to capture the screen and get the graphics or get the look of my player in the screen so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna press print screen on my keyboard and I can close that now go back into fireworks and press control V to paste that print screen and now I can go ahead and put a little rectangle right over that play button and then bring up my properties bar and make that little rectangle the same color as the bar that way I have a nice clear little canvas to create there so what I'll do is pull out another shape hold down the shapes tool and we'll get the star or you can use I think smart polygon let's use smart polygon and I'll change the sides to only three Then I'm gonna change the color on that to a lighter gray or actually let's just go ahead and make it solid white and we can make it as gray as we want and have cool hover effects on it using opacity settings in CSS3. It'll keep things easier. So I want to rotate that little guy. So I can hit my scale tool and make sure I have the little rotation symbol on my mouse there. And then just hold down shift and it'll rotate at perfect angles. So you get it like that. And then you scale it. And then you just drag it into place. And you can make that any size that you want. So I'll make it a little smaller. You can zoom in by holding control and mouse wheel. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Alright, that looks good to me. So it's uh, 16 wide and 18 high. So now what I'm going to do is remove everything. Control X. Get rid of this. Control X. And then I'm going to make my canvas transparent. You can see my symbol is still sitting there. Now I'll fit canvas on that little symbol. So I'll go to file, export wizard, continue the web exit and then go to PNG 32 mat can be transparent mat and export so I'm gonna save it in the same folder where I'm building my little video player on my watch HTML page the same folder that my watch HTML page is and you probably wanna have this in your images folder or something like that but I'm just gonna put it in the same folder and I'll name it play save now I also want to have a pause button that is the same dimensions the same size so what I'm gonna do is go to my canvas I'll make it like the color of my my bar again and I'll just remove this control X and I'll get a rectangle and I'm just gonna add two little rectangles there I'll make them white also control C control V make a copy of that one put it right next to the other one now I'm going to go and get my canvas back to transparent and do the same process again file export wizard continue continue and save it as a transparent PNG in the same folder this one we're gonna name pause save alright now I'm gonna go down and check out my play pause button I'm gonna copy that ID for that and I don't have any CSS rules set up for that bad boy yet so I'm gonna go up here uh, maybe right under the videos control bar and I'm gonna type in button with an ID of play pause button is gonna be targeted so we can bring that closing curly brace down alright so we're gonna give it a background image and the URL that we're gonna target is the play.png and we give it a border of none and we set the width that our image was the little triangle and we make sure we give it cursor pointer that way the little hand symbol shows up when the user's mouse goes over it so if we check this out you can see that we get the little hand symbol we have to remove the word play and pause that are on it and we're gonna do that in just a second and we also want to make let's, let's also give it a hover state so when the mouse goes over it it'll turn a little bit brighter so what we can do to achieve that first of all let's go down here and where it says pause on that play button let's remove that now let's go and give it an opacity setting of maybe 0 0.7 and then take a look at what you have and you'll see it's a little bit grayed out now it's a little bit more gray than it was before 
Here, let's even make it 0 0.5. And now what we're going to do is copy this and just put it right under it. Close our curly brace there. Put a colon to access the hover pseudo selector. So we put the hover pseudo selector for that play pause button. And we're going to turn its opacity 1.0 or just 1 when the user's mouse hovers over it. And now you can check out that effect. See when the, my mouse goes over it, it changes to a brighter sideways triangle. Now we still have to go into the JavaScript and change the play pause function so it's not putting words into that element. You know what I mean? So let's go and uh, let's just go ahead and collapse all this style code and then we'll go and open the script code and where are we we have the play pause function right there now we don't want to affect the inner HTML of that play button we want to change its style so we're gonna say play button dot style dot background and then we're gonna set the URL right there so we can go ahead and just borrow that code right there control C and then put it into place right there and we'll see if this works and this wants to be the pause you want to say pause PNG right there and then we can copy this code right here and put it right there and change this to play.png now let's see if that works oh I see I'm supposed to have it paused by default I'm supposed to have this be paused by default so this should be pause by default up in your CSS now test since we have it set to autoplay you have to have your pause symbol up first and then when they click pause you want to change it to the play symbol and vice versa back and forth see that's the functionality you want so when it first loads it's a pause symbol and you can see that it still has its cool hover effect no matter if it's the pause symbol or the play symbol it's pretty cool huh all right, so now you guys can go about positioning these things to be anywhere that you want in there. And if you want to use uh, display block elements, you can set all of these elements to display block. And then you can float them in there. And you can give them margin top or padding top to move them up or down in this bar wherever you need them to sit exactly. So you can set the exact pixel where those things would be in there vertically. Okay? I'm not going to do all that crap for you. Now you saw how I put that cool hover effect where it goes from dark to light just by using opacity. You can do the same thing to this little button. And this little button will also get that effect applied to it. Now since you know how to do this one, I want you to do the same thing for your mute button and your full screen button. And that's your homework. And then you'll have a nice finished, totally customized player. I hope you've enjoyed this series and I'll catch you guys in the next one. That completes this series. Goodbye.